right. and they're like they should do it for free or they should do it for a discount and they they wouldn't right. tell their doctor that and they definitely wouldn't tell their dentist that. So how dare they tell an artist that? Exactly. Yeah, so their idea of like, you're you're just having so much fun out there being an artist that uh, it's just sort of like uh, a full-time hobby, and you're just enjoying it so much that you're willing to just sort of like do it for free for whoever asks you. <laughs> like that's that's yeah. that. It's it's a business. The reality is it's a business. If you, if you really want to you know, make it work, you got to spend about fifty percent of your time doing the business side of it. It's not just like a picnic, you know. And I so imagine, uh, so Janet, I imagine, Janet, you probably get people that ask you to do things even on the entertainment side of meetings of, as a performer for either free or discount. I'm sure that they probably come to you during oh, certain yeah. times of the year, whether it's, whether it's this month, Native American Celebration Month, or whether it's at other right. times of the year, like even Women's History Month, where they feel that they can approach you about doing it for little to nothing. And I'm sure that you probably have to call them out on that and be like, look, I'm I'm doing this to make a living for me and my family, so right. I'm not trying to do it just for the sake of uh, uh, singing just because well, it's, it's something true. fun to do. You're doing it because you enjoy it, but you also I want to get paid it. for it. And if, yeah, and, but I think, I've, you know, you get paid for what you're worth. If I could do things for free, and, you know, I, I would love to, but, you know, I'm I'm an artist that has bills and I have to pay, and this is not my, you know, I don't have a day job. This is, like, what I do for a living. So a lot of people, you know, they think that I have a day job or something. I'm like, no, this is, you know, I, I don't do this, you know, for just for fun. I'd love to, but if I were a millionaire or something, yeah, I would love to give my services for free and be able to pay for the expenses. But, you know, I have my own foundation. Anything that I do that's extra, I'm going to give back to my foundation first before I give to any other foundation because, you know, it's what's near and dear to my heart, um, you know, with kids' education. So, I would love to do things for free if I could, you know, because I'd love to give. But, um, but yeah, right. it, it is a business, you know, and, and we have to, I have to pay bills like everyone else. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. We all have to pay those bills and have to deal with those yeah. bills that come every month. They don't change, you know, rent, electricity, all of those come at you every month. And if you don't get them, then pay, then they'll come after you. So we don't know that these are things that we have to deal with on a uh, – regular basis, but unfortunately, sometimes folks don't want to understand that and definitely don't want, um, they don't want to understand it for our kids' sake as well, because a lot of times I think right. that some of our kids that get involved in music, they see the glamour part of it and don't understand that they need to have the business aspect of it. Like you earlier were talking, Janet, about some of the advice that you give to people when they want to say that they want to break into the business, whether they're out of the right. native culture or whether they're out of other cultures. So what are some right. of the other advice that you're giving to folks? Because I know you definitely tell them to be business prepared, but what are some of the other advice that you have given to some of the people that you have talked to that are up and coming that want to be performers like you? Well, I mean, I, and I mentioned, I'm sorry, go ahead, Alyssa. Oh, right. that wasn't me. I don't know what that sound was. Okay. Um, but, yeah, no, just, you know, I, what I said earlier, take the opportunities. So whatever opportunity there is, take that opportunity because you never know who would be who's going to be at a show or you never know who you might network with who might, who might be present at a singing at a laundromat. You have no idea. It might not sound great, but you never know who you can meet that can get you to, to, to the next level in your career. So I say take all the opportunities that you can, even if they don't sound glamorous. But, yeah, as far as the financial part, you know, you really – it is good to have a financial advisor or an accountant or someone who knows the business side – because you do have to have, you are your own, um, you're running your own company. So you're automatically the CEO of your own company. Um, and and plus, besides just that, know, know who you are as a brand. Um, your brand is, 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 um, is just as important. Know how to market yourself. You're always selling yourself. So what you do as an artist, you're like an interview process every single day. You're literally... Interviewing for a job every single day, that's what our life is like. It's called hustling, but it's still, you're interviewing, you're branding yourself, you're marketing yourself, you're selling yourself, you know. So it's, it's hard work, and it's not about um, bragging about yourself, but you do have to hype yourself and really believe whatever you do and put that out there because you're, you are a product. 
I talk about myself in the third person, not me as Jana, you know, the human being, the you know, the girl from Lumberton, North Carolina, but I talk about Jana as this product, and I'll talk about her as a third person because I am a product, you know. So it's kind of separating yourself as well so you don't take things, you know, as far as criticism or anything else. You don't take things too personal because, you are a product, and you do have, you know, you have to separate your professional and your and your private life because that's really important, and you know, in our business. Um, so there's a lot of things, you know, so many things. But um, I do tell kids or people who are in, in inspired definitely just take the opportunities. Like I think it was P Diddy or something, Puffy, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> he said the same thing. I when he he said that I heard that in an interview. It doesn't matter. Take that opportunity if it's a, if it is singing in a laundry mat or if you got to be the you know take it because you never know who's going to be there that might help you get to the next level. Yeah, there's no telling where you might run into folks. Uh, one of the stories that I always share with people, which is uh, there's a group here in North Carolina in Durham that's actually they uh, very successful now called the Gospel Mighty Gospel Inspirations. But the first time because oh. I've done a lot of work with different festivals, including um, Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix Fest uh, to some degree, but definitely Center Fest and Bimbe and the Blues Festival. But the first time that I actually met them, I was, uh, I can say this because, you know, we were talking about good eating, but I am guilty of eating bad food at a cost of the hate at the KFC. So years, years ago, I went to the I KFC, KFC. Still, go there, still go there way too often. So I went across the KFC and was having a conversation with a gentleman, uh, I mean, my uh mid fifties now, but so he was probably at that time in his mid fifties or he might have even been in his uh sixties. But we were talking and he was like, Yeah, I'm part of a gospel band and it, he told me the name of the band. I then got in touch with them and I think I got him one of their first like festival gigs. But it was all because I just happened to go to KFC and overhear him talking about the fact that he played in a gospel band. So oh but, like God, you said, you never awesome. know who you might run into or when you might yeah. run into so I I'm sure he was not expecting to have somebody come into him that way. And another story that I remember was um, years ago, a friend of mine actually did the Christmas parade, which is still going on in the area, but it was the Christmas parade that at that time Phyllis Coley, who runs Spectacular Magazine, was doing. And we saw, like, one of the little, um, I call them the go-kart cars, but cars that basically are frames and they don't have any um, hood or anything else, and we were like, I told her in the middle of the conversation because she was driving. I'm definitely one of those non-driving people. And I was like, we should get them for the um, parade. And she literally did a uh, almost a 360 turn in order to chase that man down and say, look, we want you in the wow. parade. Oh, my God. So you, you're right. Yeah, you, you, never, you never know where these opportunities may come your way. So, uh, Listen, Alyssa, my, you're an educator. My... and Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Alyssa, I was saying you're an educator and also an artist, so I'm sure you have all kinds of advice that you give your students that want to break into the art field. I mean, it's not even the visual arts is not for everybody. So, uh, what do you talk when you talk to your uh, students and just people in general that might be uh, younger than you that are interested in getting into the uh, creative side, and if they're interested in the visual arts or one of the uh, less of the performing arts, what kind of advice do you give them? Well. Um, I talk a lot about that whole business side of things because that's the number one thing I feel I feel like uh, was lacking in my education. Where you know you go through art school and nobody really talks about that you know that stuff, accounting and you know distribution and all that stuff. Nobody really talks about that, um, and then you have to kind of like learn it on yourself, like the you know postgraduate school of business school of art knox or whatever self education in business. So I, I would say to them. Study the things side by side, art, art and design, but then take some business classes so that you can meld the two together. That you're, in, you're living in reality. When you graduate, you'll know how to, you'll have an idea at least about how to launch yourself and how to promote yourself. And then the other, the other sort of, I think, big misnomer that people have is uh, this, this whole idea of like, well, I, I don't feel like I only do my art when I feel inspired, when I feel moved. I do my art otherwise, you know, I can't do my art unless, unless I feel moved. Well, as a professional artist, you, you, need, you need to like be disciplined and just 
even if you don't feel moved on a given day, you just go ahead and start anyway and hope that you will become moved by jumping in. You know, just jump in and, like, after you practice that, you'll get to the point where you can just turn that switch on whenever you, you know, you want, you know, or at least in a reasonable degree. Um, yeah. It is a way of life just, that is, uh, is re- repetitive, and it, you have to be in it for the long haul. Mostly what I talk yeah, I to my students some, about is just self-expression. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of times they don't understand it is for the long haul. I remember last week we had a gentleman on that was talking about, um, he actually sells luxury condos in Miami, um, and he's actually an African-American gentleman, but he was talking about the fact that even when he talks to the athletes and the entertainers that are there in Miami, which, of course, has a rich cultural community and everything, and a lot of these folks are making uh, multiple figures, you know, eight, nine, ten-figure kind of incomes, but they're not even thinking about the long term because, you know, they're getting either bad or no financial advice and he was telling us about how he talked to them about how they need to invest in some of these things that can be in there for the long term and can actually be generational building kind of things because a lot of times we get folks that just want to do it for that moment at that time, and they don't think about the fact that they need to create a um, financial background that can help their loved ones after they have gone because, you know, even if you're in the entertainment field and you hope that uh, you stay there forever and they're able to have a career of decades and even if you're lucky, maybe even – go into multiple decades, but you do know that afterwards you have to have preparation for people that are coming after you. They may go into that field or they may not, but you want them to be financially stable with whatever happens after you have left this plane and then moved into the next spiritual world. Right. Yeah. I, actually, I've I was talking to my students about that, about just, you know, how you can actually, you can make a living doing design uh, if you really want to, and how, um, to a lot of people, the artist or the designer is like a magician, like, they, you know, they have a reference for people who can, can put a design together, and, you, you know, people need other people to do that for them, because most people are, you know, kind of, I would say, artistic. like your average person who's not really a born artist, you know, they they need somebody to fill that that gap, and uh, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the kids, you know, I'm, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say, <laughs> I forgot what point I was oh, no. I was saying something about it, about uh, just letting the kids know that. Um... Yeah, definitely have to let the kids know what's going on and things of that nature. Because a lot of times they don't have any clues to what's going on and things of of, of how to do that. Um, Jenna, you said you started this foundation that was dealing with education. And my mom actually came out of the foundation background. She was uh, the president of the Golden Leaf Foundation, and before that, she worked at Z Smith Reynolds. But how did you come about creating the foundation, and how did you? Uh, find that in terms of being able to do that because that's not something easy to do to create a foundation of any sort but you've created this foundation that's helping out you so what was that like creating that foundation and uh, how did you go about doing that well um, it started organically because when I was performing in the beginning of my career I did a lot of shows um, on reservations for um, kids you know elementary school secondary school you know high school things like that so I was doing a lot of performances, and I would have a lot of the kids ask me questions, even, like, after the performance or, you know, well, how do you get started? So I felt like, well, let me turn this into maybe a Q&A or, like, a, a speech slash music performance. So it turned into kind of a motivational speaking engagement. And I felt, you know, there was a need in a lot of the reservations um, about, you know, for education because, a lot of the kids were like, well, I'm not going to be able to go to college because, I, you know, I can't afford it. That's the number one thing. We can't afford it. And so I felt like, you know, I had the opportunity um, college on mostly scholarship, not a full scholarship, but I had several scholarships that I, that I was able to get, um, at, you know, academic scholarships and things like that. I felt like there was a need for, for that, and especially for Native kids who feel like there's no opportunity. So just visiting the, the, the reservations and visiting the kids and seeing a need for it, I felt 
this was something that was near and dear to me. And um, even 